Well, a year and a half ago, we had an awesome experience. Uh, three of us, supported by Christians in Commerce, had a chance to go to Fort Portal, Uganda, and put on our first Christians in Commerce uh, weekend. It was a powerful event full of the spirit. And at the end of the time, uh, on Sunday before we finished everything up, we asked the people there, because we were leaving, if they would choose amongst themselves a leader of the uh, men and a leader of the women's group. And uh, at that time, uh, the peers uh, chose Aloysius Mugisa as the leader of the men's group. And um, I'm here to briefly tell you a little bit about Aloysius. He's 37 years old. He's married, but almost 10 years. He's got two children, uh, seven and nine years old, two daughters. And um, he is a uh, college graduate, studied um, English and uh, teaching literature in the language of English. And uh, he also some uh, training in uh, Christian religious education. He is currently a second education, second uh, secondary school education teacher. Uh, in Fort Portal, and he teaches English and he teaches uh, literature. And uh, his first challenge weekend was on June 2005. Let's welcome Aloysius. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Amen. The Lord is good. All the, time. the Lord is good. All the time. All the time. Good. Yeah, in Uganda, we say, when we say the Lord is good, uh, they, uh, all the people respond all the time. And when we say all the time, they respond. No, when, they, uh, when he, one says all the time, the Lord is good, they respond all the time, and that's his nature. Wow. <laughs> so we shall practice that briefly. The Lord is good all the time. All the time. Amen. <laughs> um, uh, my brothers and sisters, Kobe has already introduced me. I think I have uh, uh, very little to speak about myself. Maybe one thing he didn't say is that uh, I have uh, two daughters. Uh, the first born is nine years, and uh, the second born is seven years. The first born is in uh, primary four, and the second born is in uh, primary two. Their names are Gloria and Robina. Um, I am a secondary school teacher, and I teach English language and literature in English, as he has already told you. Uh, I can see in myself the potential to write. I am now developing the career of writing. I have already put my hand at it. I have written a, a novel, which is right now being proofread by five people in Uganda, and the title is A Woman's Tears. It is a, a satire that is uh, ridiculing the abuse of women's rights in Africa, but in Uganda in particular. Now, my brothers and sisters, before I begin sharing with you my testimony, allow me first to make a very short announcement. And the, the announcement is that I have a God whose name is high above all other names. <laughs> my God is an awesome God. My God is a handsome God. And my God is a marvelous God. Blessed be his holy and precious name. Ah. Uh, for the time I have lived on this, pla on this planet, I have seen God's hand work mightily in my life. I have seen quite a lot. The Lord has intervened in very many situations in my life, and uh, I have often told people that I have a greater reason to praise the Lord than many other people. I, in fact, I have no reason uh, for not praising the Lord. And uh, I should say, given all that the Lord has done for me in my life, if I turned my back to him, then I should burn in a hotter hell than uh, the one in which Bad Rose would go. 
<laughs> yeah, the Lord has done quite a lot. Uh, my very presence before you this afternoon is a clear vindication of the Lord's mighty intervention in the circumstances of my life. The Lord wanted me to be here. If he hadn't wanted me to be here, I wouldn't be here. I think it, it was preordained that I would be here this, after, this, this afternoon. And uh, I must say that on the 16th of September, I mean October, he flew me on his palm from uh, Entebbe, Uganda, up to Phoenix here. I didn't come on any aircraft. I suppose I was flown on the palm of the Lord. Thank God. Amen. Uh, I haven't seen the Lord working only in my life, but also in the lives of other people. So the testimony I give is not a testimony, is not only a testimony of my own, but also a testimony of other people. For instance, uh, some of you must have noticed yesterday that I didn't have lunch with you. Uh, a dear brother, uh, my partner in the sharing group, took me to his place to show me the hand of God in his life, in his circumstances. We were there. I saw with my eyes, I touched with my hands, and I believed that this was nothing but only the hand of the Lord. And when we remember the episode of Jesus with the Samaritan woman at the wall of Jacob, after the discourse with Jesus, the woman ran to the towns and called the people. The people came and listened to Jesus, and they said, now we believe not because of your verbal report, but because we have seen with our own eyes. Yesterday, I was there at my brother's place, and I saw with my own eyes, and I touched with my own hands, and I believed. And what did we do when we were there? We said a prayer of thanksgiving. Not a prayer of entreaty, not a prayer of supplication, not a prayer of intercession, but a prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord is wonderful. Um, Bill Dalgetty must have told you about my testimony of uh, the complication in getting a visa. In April this year, Bill Dalgetty sent me an invitation to call me to come to this conference. And uh, I said, another opportunity of encountering the Lord has come. Another opportunity of learning more about CIC has come. I praised the Lord. I went into the process of pursuing a visa. I got a visa. And uh, I got ready, I mean a, a passport. Then I got ready to go to the embassy, to the US embassy in Uganda to get a visa. Uh, Bill Dalgetty wrote me an invitation letter which he, co which he copied to the consulate, the US consulate in Uganda. Uh, he also wrote to the consular officer of the US in Uganda uh, uh, requesting him to give me the visa and he copied that letter to me. So I got those two letters I got my, a recommendation letter from my bishop. Uh, I got a recommendation letter from my employer, the head teacher of the school where I teach. Uh, I got the appointment letter. I attached my marriage certificate and walked to the embassy, to the US embassy in Uganda. And uh, I was admitted into the interviewing room. And the interviewing officer looked at me and he asked me, do you intend to go to the US? I said, yes, please. He said, how much money do you earn a month and what property do you have? I told him, I told him uh, it is between 190 and $200 and uh, I told him the, the little property I have, including my bed sheets and blanket. Uh, <laughs> and he said, so he looked at my papers and he was unfriendly, I must say. He didn't take enough time to read the letters and he only say, you simply don't qualify to go to the US. And uh, he threw my papers back to me and he said, go out of here, you don't qualify to go to the US. I just picked my papers and walked out miserably and frustrated. But before I went away, he said, you can reapply. If, if you wish, you can reapply, but reapply only if you have seen a considerable change in your circumstances. That's what he said. Uh, and he, uh, he asked me, uh, why didn't you attach your bank statements and your land title? So uh, I, went, I returned home. I felt that maybe I had failed to attach my bank statements and the land title, and that's why I had been uh, found ineligible 
for a visa to U.S. I felt that maybe I had failed to attach my bank statements and the land title, and that's why I had been uh, found ineligible for a visa to U.S. So I went, uh, I got my, my, my pay slips, my bank statements, I attached them. Uh, I also attached the birth certificates of my children because for, the U, uh, for getting a U.S. visa, you must prove beyond any doubt to the interviewing officers that you have economic and social ties in Uganda so that uh, you will have a reason to compel you to return to Uganda. Because so many people flee from poverty in Africa, they come and live here as uh, immig uh, illegal immigrants. And uh, according to the U.S. law, any visitor, any intending visitor to come to U.S. is uh, an intending immigrant. So you must prove otherwise. Otherwise, you cannot be given a visa. So when I walked there the second time, uh, uh, he said, I'm not going to interview. I interviewed the first time and you failed. Now you are going to be interviewed by uh, my colleague. So I took my documents to his colleague and uh, he looked at them. He took some time and he said, I'm sorry, you are ineligible. You, you, you cannot go to U.S. Your income is very low. You have not been traveling internationally. Uh, you, you cannot go. I showed him my, my, my the, the, I had attached the sales agreement of which we made as I bought my piece of land. Uh, and uh, he said, but you don't have a home in Uganda. I said, I have a home. Uh, he, but uh, my, my, my house does, didn't get the approval of the town engineers because it is a, a small, simple, semi-permanent structure. And so he said, no, with this one, you don't have a home. We presume that you are a vagrant and you are intending to run away from poverty and uh, live in the U.S. It was very frustrating, my brothers and sisters, uh, to be considered a vagrant and uh, uh, to, to be looked at someone who, ha who doesn't have uh, a home. It was very, very devastating. So I walked out uh, of uh, the embassy. But I had told the Lord that, Lord, even if I don't get the visa, I am going to remain faithful to you. I am not going to curse you. I'm not going to turn away from you because I have no any other God to whom to turn. So I walked out of the embassy. I was uh, dejected and rejected. Uh, I, I went home. I remember I, call, I, I, called, I sent Bill a message and told him that Bill... I have once again been denied a visa. I'm sure Bill must have been very, very devastated by what, uh, by the message I sent him because he was quiet for a whole week. <laughs> he, didn't say, he didn't call. He didn't call. He didn't send an email. He, he didn't do anything. Uh, and I was also, but uh, then I, the words of the gospel came to me. Aloysius, you have been denied a visa because... Uh, you are considered to be a vagrant who has no home in uh, Uganda. You have no residence. And I remembered Jesus saying, uh, birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I said, Lord, uh, uh, I am very privileged to be identified with you. Me and you are homeless. <laughs> <laughs> but my brothers and sisters, after five days, the Lord spoke to me, Aloysius, it's not yet over. It's not yet over. Deep in me, I felt the visa was going to be given me. I didn't know what I would do to get a visa, but there was in me a feeling that the visa would be given me. And then the words of the sacred scriptures came to me again. And, you know, I, time was running out. I said, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, will, you, will you, Lord, give me a visa after the conference is over? Uh, so, so what use will the visa be? But then, uh, <laughs> but then the words of the scripture were coming over again, and I heard the Lord say, it is me who promised Abraham and told him that he would be an ancestor of a great nation, and his descendants would be more than the grains of sand on the seashore, and they would be more than the stars in the skies. And yet, it is, the, it is I who held him from having a child until he was 100 years old. And until his wife, Sarah, was past childbearing age. But that did not in any way stall my plan. And I am the same Lord who, after I had given him a son, only one son, who was the only source 
of uh, descendants for him, I asked him to go and sacrifice him to me. And uh, still, that didn't stall my plan, for, uh, my plan of giving him uh, many descendants. I said, Lord, fine. The words of the scriptures came to me once again. I remembered the death and the resurrection of Lazarus. When he fell sick, Mary and Martha sent to Jesus because he was a great friend of Lazarus. And Jesus deliberately delayed for four days until Lazarus died. And when he came, after Lazarus had been, uh, you know, buried, uh, he went to the tomb and said, roll off the stone. And the sisters said, Lord, it's four days since we buried him. He will smell. And he told them, if you believe, you are going to see. And they saw. They saw the Lord who substitutes death with life. The Lord who draws the best out of the worst. And then I heard the voice saying, y it's not yet too late. So I called Bill and said, Bill, I am going to apply the third time. But before that, I asked Bill to, co to call because the people told me, as I, uh, the people I, I was discussing with, and they said, but why don't you ask your hosts in America to call their embassy here in Uganda? Uh, the consular will certainly believe uh, and will give you a visa if your host, the Americans, call, call, the, call him and talk to him. So I asked Bill to do that, and he did it, and uh, my friends, the consular officer told him that I had been found irreversibly ineligible for a visa. <laughs> I simply couldn't get a visa. Uh, Bill had a long telephone conversation with the consular, and nothing happened. So... Uh, it was like, it's all over. So uh, I talked to Bill. He sounded desperate, and he said, Aloysius, uh, I don't know. But uh, I went to my bishop and asked him to write a visa petition. He wrote a very strongly worded visa petition. He sent me also to Uganda Episcopal Conference, the Conference of Catholic Bishops. I went to the Secretary General of the Uganda Episcopal Conference, and he wrote a very widely, a strongly worded recommendation letter. I went to court before the chief magistrate and I swore an affidavit, getting myself ready. I sent all these documents ahead of me. Two days later, I went and applied for a visa online. And uh, the application also went ahead of me. When I walked into the interviewing room, the same officer who had failed me the first time had all these documents with him on his desk. And he had highlighted the very important words in those documents that had been sent him. And he, he asked me, Aloysius, you have been here twice and you have been found ineligible for a US visa and you have come the third time. What makes you think that this time you are going to qualify for a visa? And I said, given the additional supportive documents, I don't see any more room for failure today. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he laughed, he looked at me, he asked me a million and one questions, and then finally he said, tomorrow come and take your visa. You've qualified. <laughs> I was alarmed, my brothers and sisters, by that, by that, uh, by, by the mighty intervention of the Lord into my circumstances. And I am here today by nothing but by miracle. Praise God. And you know, uh, wh while I was going through that crisis, uh, I remembered an incident in which the Lord tried my faith. My firstborn daughter, Robina, whom I have told you about, was struck by a strange and deadly disease at the age of one year and three months. And uh, I took her to hospital at the earliest signs of sickness. But uh, instead of improving in the hospital, she was getting worse and worse. After seven no, after 14 days, the doctor told me I have done the best I could. By that time, the, 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 the girl was only breathing uh, by the help of a respirator. The, tissue, the tissues underneath her lungs had been eaten up, and her chest cavity had been filled with pus, and uh, the doctor said the chances of her recovery are very slim. We are just waiting for nature to take its course. We prayed morning, afternoon, and evening, and uh, at one time, because the girl was in very bad pain, at one point I felt, Lord, take her and relieve her uh, from this pain. But I remember I went into my office. I was still working for the diocese as director of catechetical formation, and I prayed and I said, 
Lord, it's bad of you. Why do you take away my daughter, my first daughter at this tender age? Uh, and I told him, but Lord, uh, even if you take her away, I am not going to leave you. Simply because I have no truer and mightier God than you. But if I had an alternative, Lord, I would leave you. <laughs> That's what I told him. But since I have no alternative, I am not going to abandon you. I prayed and uh, uh, I decided to take the girl out of the hospital to look for better services. I went to look for a pediatrician in the district referral hospital and we found a, pedi a pediatrician who said, oh, it's a pity that this girl was not given uh, intra uh, uh, antibiotics intravenously. They have been giving her oral, uh, oral I mean at antibiotics orally, but the stomach was upset and they couldn't be well absorbed. But because the child was young and fat, the nurses tried to start an IV lane and they failed. An IV lane and they failed. So uh, this doctor being a pediatrician tried just once and uh, he succeeded. And they started, you know, treating her. But uh, the chest cavity was filled with pus. So he had to prick with a long needle to suck out the pus. He did that for two days, but the, the pus would fill up again. So he inserted a tube to drain out the pus, but the pus would fill again. And he said, no, take this, this girl to a bigger hospital where they have better machines because it will need a suction tube to suck out the pus or it may require an operation. So, but the, lady, the girl was so, so weak that uh, some people felt it would be unwise of me to take her to hospital. I said, I will take her. I took her alone, hired uh, an ambulance, and we took her to that hospital. And the doctor said she was too weak to be operated upon. She, he inserted uh, a bigger tube and drained the pus for one month. There we were in the hospital. But my brothers and sisters, now uh, many of you have seen the pictures of that girl. When you look at those pictures, if you saw the girl right now, you wouldn't believe my story. You wouldn't believe that she was fatally sick at one time. The hand of the Lord. How did I come to know about CIC? In June last year, a teacher with whom I teach at school came and told me, Aloysius, a group of Americans have come and they are going to give a retreat to teachers. Could you please come and be part of us? He told me it was Friday afternoon. And the, retre and, and the retreat he talked about, that is the challenge weekend, would begin the same evening of that, uh, the, the evening of that day. <laughs> and I said, you must be crazy. I was, in fact, scheduled for a program the next day. I was going to attend a workshop of the teachers of English language and literature in English. And I said, no, I cannot come. I am going to attend a workshop. He said, but it would be good for you if you came. So we parted ways. When he left me, I kept feeling the urge in me to attend the challenge weekend, the retreat. I debated within myself the workshop for English language teachers and the retreat. I, I was undecided for quite a long time, but my brothers and sisters, I don't know what happened. I found myself packing my bags and going to the challenge weekend. <laughs> and there I was. I didn't regret. I didn't regret at all. The teachings, the group discussions. I was challenged by three men from Europe, I mean from Am America, coming to Uganda to teach African teachers for that time. That was the first challenge itself. And what they said. So when, uh, uh, when the challenge uh, weekend was ending, I was elected to be the first president for the interim period. And after the interim period, I was confirmed. And uh, I am now the president of CIC. Uh, <laughs> in Africa. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, for me, in CIC, I see three images, especially after the challenge weekend. The message of the messenger, the message of the message, and the message of the sender. Three people. The message, the message, the messenger, no, no, uh, not the message of the message, the images. The image of the message, 
the image of the messenger and the image of the master or the sender. I see the Lord as the sender and the master. And the message is that Christ lives and saves. And then the messenger is me. That the message must reach out to as many, as, to as many people as possible. Probably the Lord has not yet returned because the message of the gospel has not reached all creation. Because he said, after the whole of creation has been preached to and received the message, then the Lord will come back. Probably we are delaying our own going to heaven, gentlemen and ladies. Because we have not yet taken the message to the ends of the earth. And uh, it is my prayer, it is my commitment that we do take the message. The performance of, the performance of CIC in Fort Porto, Uganda, we have two chapters. The men's chapter and the women's chapter. In the men's chapter, we have 16 men. And in the women's chapter, we have 15 women. We have three challenge groups. One group has nine members. The other one has uh, four members. The last time he was there, uh, the challenge, but all these challenge groups are made up of women. But the last time he was at uh, the other challenge group, I found the two women had been, four women had been joined by two men. I didn't want to discourage the men. Uh, they are there. Uh, I'm going to make all possible efforts to get a third man for them so that we can begin a separate challenge group for the men in that area. Then we have what we call a CIC praise and worship team. Uh, this is made of uh, young adults between the age of 15 and uh, 25. They help us in our CIC meetings. And, but they meet alone. Basically, uh, they meet to praise the Lord and also share the vision and mission of CIC. The impact of CIC, personally, I have been strengthened. I was startled into, into a new awareness of my call to go and proclaim Jesus. I love my Bible more than I did. I made a promise that I'm going to tithe my time and my resources, and I'm trying to do that to the best of my ability. Pray for me that I may do it. We have had two renewal days since CIC began in Fort Porto, and two days of renewal and two social evenings. The last renewal day was interchapter renewal day. The men and women stayed together until it came to the time of group discussions. In fact, normally with us, we pray together, but when it comes time of group discussions, uh, the men go alone and the women go alone. Uh, that is the stand of... Uh, uh, the CIC. Uh, now, the bottlenecks of CIC in Fort Porto, uh, the workload. I am a very busy person. I have a family to raise. I am a teacher. I teach from morning till evening. Uganda is a, is a poor country. We don't have means of transport. We have to raid or walk, ride bicycles or walk to get to these places and see the members. Uh, money, I don't want to talk about money. Just one thing I have come to learn and something that has been even underlined and re-emphasized in this conference is that uh, the Lord does not need money for evangelization. The ministry needs money, but the Lord doesn't need money. He, he has all the money. He has all the money required for ministry. The minister needs money, but the Lord doesn't need the money. He is the richest of, of, of all people. Uh, we don't have money, uh, but what the Lord needs, he needs people. And uh, I am doing my, the best I can to avail myself. Uganda is, pov is, is a poor country, yes. Uh, for instance, the reason I was refused the visa is because I was considered to be poor. Uh, I, I don't have a home. You know, I have a, a piece of land in the municipality. Eh? You, I, I suppose you know what a municipality is. I have a piece of land in the municipality. At one time, I had to sell my small motorcycle and saved uh, to raise money to buy the land in the municipality. And uh, I put there a, a semi-permanent structure made of mud and water. And that has been my home for the last nine years. And uh, now there is a new rule for local development. The authorities of the town are saying, whoever has 
whoever has land in the municipality must develop it by building there a permanent structure, a brick house or a block house. If you cannot do that, then you must forego your land. Leave it to those who have enough money to develop it. Because they, they, cannot, uh, they cannot entertain uh, uh, semi-permanent structures uh, in the town. Uh, me and my wife have been praying. It's we get very little money. She gets 100. I get about 200. We have a family to look after. She gets more worried than me. I tell her, let's see, what the Lord let's see where the Lord wants to put us. And uh, I, I know the Lord will not let us lose the land. For the last three years, I have saved up to $2,000. I have kept it aside. Um, I'm looking upon the mountains to see the Lord bring, make a breakthrough. Uh, but one thing I know is that though we are poor in Uganda, uh, we are not so poor. Our poverty is maybe lack of money, uh, physical facilities, but we are rich in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. The Lord has taken good care of me and my family. I think I, I don't look so bad. Do I look malnourished? <laughs> <laughs> And he will continue taking good care of me. Finally, my brothers and sisters, my impression, I want to end with my impression of my having visited the U.S. and my impression of having attended this conference. You have been a big blessing to me, a source of inspiration. You, you, know, you people, you have been awesomely and abundantly blessed. You are a very, very blessed. I, I have visited some places, some homes, and I said, my goodness, you know, at one time he asked Tim, I don't see people walking on the road as he was driving. And he said, no, here people don't walk. I said, do they fly? <laughs> <laughs> yes, people, you have been awesomely blessed. Now, when I see you, men of your wealth, men of your education, men and women of your responsibilities, here for these almost three days, I see God at work. You have inspired me. You have indeed inspired me. Uh, and you have blessed me. And you are a very loving people. We, we, you know, we have a different image of you when we are out there. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, yeah, finally, my brothers and sisters, the talks here have also, I'm going out of here a new man. A new man, rejuvenated, revitalized, restrengthened. I, 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 I think when I go, uh, uh, something bigger must be done. Yes, thank you very much for all the talks, the mustard seed, the mustard seed, a very small seed at one time, which gave shelter to all the birds. With the meager resources that we have, I'm going to take my, my, my voice and my skin, and I believe the Lord will get a big tree out of that. Uh, 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 thank you very much for all the sharings. Uh, they have taken longer than uh, time was allocated to me. I wish you the best in all you do for the spread of the kingdom of the Lord, and the Lord be with you.